In this video, we'll examine some tips on making great custom strategies. In the introduction video, you saw the fast lane analogy, where each lane represents a market sector, and the intervals represent the rate of travel at any particular time. You saw that by driving in the fast lane, you could achieve better performance, like this. Simply applying this principle when assembling a custom strategy is where it's at. In episode 1, we'll try to apply the principle to the attack of the clones. Shown on the list and the chart are eight well-diversified fidelity funds, none of them straying too far from the Standard & Poor's 500 index shown in white. This rainbow of virtual clones includes the funds Fidelity Spartan 500 index, Fidelity Trend, Fidelity Asset Manager, another Fidelity Spartan 500 index, Fidelity Equity Income, Fidelity Dividend Growth, Fidelity Magellan, and Fidelity Growth and Income. Clearly, there are no shortage of ways you can achieve average performance. So let's see what Sector Surfer can make out of these clones, starting with just one of the Fidelity clone funds in red, and with the Standard & Poor's 500 index in white for reference, Sector Surfer performs as shown in yellow. These periods during market storms are when Sector Surfer's Storm Guard feature put this strategy in an interest-bearing money market fund. Now watch carefully as I add the other clones little by little. Here is one more clone, here are two more clones, another two clones, and the final two clones. While there was slight improvement because of the slight differences between them, here is the point. Adding more diversified things to something that is already diversified is meaningless. And the only improvement of significance occurred when Sector Surfer dumped diversification entirely in favor of a narrow asset class in this case, money market. Said in a different way, performance comes from reducing diversification, not increasing diversification. Warren Buffett, the investment oracle of Omaha, put it this way, wide diversification is only required when investors do not understand what they're doing. The point? Diversified clones don't belong in your strategies. Put them where they belong, unless average is what you prefer. In Episode 2, the sectors strike back, whereas clones of well-diversified funds all travel in their lanes at about the same speed, as one can readily see in this chart of four Vanguard sector funds, this is not a tight little rainbow. Here, each has a mind of its own. This strategy of four funds includes Real Estate Investment Trust, Precious Metals and Minerals, Energy, and Healthcare. When the sector surfing principles are applied, we get this result. Now we're talking remarkable returns and remarkably low risk. Similarly, this strategy of T. Rowe Price Country and International Region Funds is also not a tight little rainbow of diversified clones. Sector Surfer finds the one with leadership and you own that one and only that one fund. Again, we're talking remarkable returns and remarkably low risk. One last place to go hunting is in market capitalization. This strategy holds only the Fidelity large cap, mid cap, and small cap funds. Although returns are lower than the country's and market sector strategies, its return and risk is still noteworthy and may be something to consider with the limited fund offerings of many company retirement plans. Now for Episode 3, The Whipsaw Menace. In this very simple strategy, Sector Surfer can only choose between a brokerage fund and a money market fund. At this point in time, it looks like the fund is weakening and we should exit the cash. In hindsight, this was what sports fans would call a head fake. Shortly after committing to the move to cash, the fund turned around and went the other way. By the time we were again confident that it really was going further higher, we had already lost 5% compared to just riding it through. This is classic whipsaw. If we add the Standard & Poor's 500 index to the same chart, in white, it is obvious that the pullback in the brokerage fund was not about the relative strength of that sector at all, but rather just part of the normal short-term market gyrations. A money market fund is not the right tool for making a sector rotation decision. In this rainbow diversification chart we viewed earlier, we saw that Sector Surfer's Storm Guard feature took us to the safety of a money market fund both here and here. Deciding to be in or out of the market is a much longer time frame decision than deciding which sector is in the fast lane. Watch as I add a money market fund to this strategy 
as if it were just another sector to choose from. The return went down from about 14% per year to about 13% per year, basically due to the whipsaw problem. Going back to the rainbow diversification chart by removing the money market fund, watch as I add a bond fund to the strategy now, as if it were just another sector to choose from. Pretty much the same story. The return went down from about 14% per year to about 13% per year, basically due to the whipsaw problem. In summary, here's how to make great strategies. No clones. More of the same changes nothing. No bonds. No money markets. Their character is different from market sectors and countries. Sector Surfer's Storm Guard feature already separately incorporates the security expected from these asset classes. Market sectors have the best divergent character. No wonder we call it Sector Surfer. World regions and countries also have respectable divergent character similar to that of market sectors. Market capitalization, although much less prolific, still has useful divergences if sectors and countries are not available to you. Good luck, and thanks for sector surfing with us!